again and again and inviting for the sessions and uh, today uh, i came to know that this is your uh, second day of uh, five days or six days program and this is about indian knowledge system so without wasting time let me go into the topic directly and uh, welcome all of the participants all of my participants and uh, i would like to expect your patient lesson listening to the session and there will be a question and answer session in the end and we will interact in there and uh, let me start the session with all your permission thank you now that about indian knowledge system as uh, the topic itself indicates this is about the conventional techniques and methods that we are uh, about to learn even though our ancestors they are following the scheme and uh, actually we are following their ancestors roles but still we do believe that uh, these all cultures have been adopted from somewhere else and uh, these particular uh, things what are what all sessions or what are the traditional methods or conventional methods actually we are following and even the modern techniques are the molded or optimized the forms of all these ancient and traditional methods and uh, for that believing in that firstly we have to start from the session like uh, from the beginnings or from the very uh, first or very um, uh, what to say the beginning stage we would like to we have to know about so that uh, we can learn all systems have been available in our particular um, era without any particular errors okay uh, so for that uh, let us uh, go through the civil engineering aspects uh, which is important when talking about the indian knowledge system for this firstly when talking about the buildings and their construction we ourselves even are believing that even uh, all these construction techniques have been adopted from some egyptian techniques even i have heard in some workshops or something like that as if we are uh, copying their culture and tradition in our construction methods which is absolutely a myth and we have to believe in ourselves and we we have to trust or we have to learn the techniques which our uh, ancestors in the sense our in the sense uh, we the indian culture or indian traditional methods that we are following in this particular construction and building, that is building construction and in the uh, civil engineering methods and so for that we will i will try to try actually i will try my level best to give you a very good uh, information about what are all the civil engineering aspects uh, that our ancestors have been done all those brilliant minds have been done which is followed even nowadays and even the modified forms which we are calling it as modern construction techniques and uh, for that let us start from the perspectives of artha shastra on town planning may have heard about town planning and uh, the basic relevance and importance in town planning we will discuss here and for that firstly we have to discuss what are all the perspectives of artha shastra or all, what are all the point of view in this particular town planning based on this artha shastra Artha Shastra, the word itself is an ancient Indian text attributed to Kautilya, who is Chanakya, the king of organizational behavior or structures or uh, plannings. Uh, we are famous about uh, the Chanakya Sutras, we, we may have heard about it. And uh, it provides insights into various aspects of governance and administration, including town planning. And the primary focus of Artha Shastra is on statecraft and politics. Actually, it does contain perspectives on urban planning and management. And the historical reference include understanding how the ancient Indian societies approached the organization and the development of urban centers. Urbanization, about urbanization, we ourselves, uh, maybe uh, all of us may be employed so firstly we will be giving preference to our career and then the education of our children and somehow we will manage to uh, get a house or a, a residence with, which is very close to the uh, college or, uh, or the educational institutions which us and our family members belong to and then we will be giving preference to the office which we are working like that when it comes to the when it come, comes to the case of residence now that we are preferring the conveyance uh, or we are giving preference to conveyance or our facility and our convenience to reach our workplace as well as our uh, educational centers right so this is how the urbanization is taking place that is we are changing our residential floors or residential 
areas in the accordance to how we are actually uh, uh, connected to this society so there causes the rural area become land uh, the, the rural areas that means uh, our agricultural land everything will be uh, left unattended and we will be moving on based on our convenience to some better place to that better place which we can call as urban areas there they will be having or they, they have planned about that will be planned with a better facility for education as well as industries might be there with a better placement opportunities and a lot more attractive things may be there in that particular uh, so-called urban areas so what are the <coughs> key perspectives of town planning as outlined in the artha shastra the total key perspectives include the layout and organizational of that is the layout and organization of cities and then the defensive structures about the defensive structures and then <laughs> sorry for that this is visible right okay so about the defensive structures we will be considering during the town planning and about water management and the marketplace and trade we will be considering the sanitation and public health we have to take care about and the city administration should be considered during the town planning and the land use planning have to be considered and the public amenities that are which are all the facilities that we can provide to the public should be considered and the urban expansion that we should consider taxation and revenue collection that is all the things we have to consider or these are all the key perspectives of town planning when outlined based on this artha shastra about vastu shastra so directly we are moving due to the uh, unavailability of time directly we are move on to the contents uh, very fastly i'll be switching directly and if uh, you uh, feel anything uh, inconvenient please do let me know this is a interactive session as well without any question and answer session you can even interact okay if you want to now that about vastu shastra about vastu shastra it is referred the science of architecture or science of construction as i already told our ancestors have so many ideas lot more ideas they were having about the construction techniques but still we are only confused about their caliber so when it comes to the town planning what is the relevance of vastu shastra for learning this we must know about the importance or relevance of vastu shastra in constructing a single residential or a single building okay now in ancient indian system of architectural design and planning it has ancient rules that is principles found in ancient indian texts such as veda purana and then manasaras etc then it is developed as a essential part of hindu architecture and for temple construction as well so what are the basic or fundamental principles that is based on this particular vastu shastra that we will discuss about this is the five elements uh, can anyone from the participants tell me or let me know about uh, whether if you know which are all the five elements that we consider any of the participants can you please unmute yourself and let me know about the same if you have any idea about this earth water fire air space sure yes thank you kalyani yes this is the panja podas yes this is about the panja podas that do that we do believe and uh, in our uh, colloquial language we will be having lot more definitions about this maybe and the five elements basically include as i have mentioned here earth water fire air and space which is also known as panja podas that is agasham bhumi vayu agni and jalam whether we say in our colloquial language and the directional influence is the second one which emphasizes the significance of cardinal these directions this northwest <laughs> sorry actually i was suffering from throat pain uh but since i committed this you know there was no way of escaping that is why i am uh, continuing this if you found any inconvenience please do interact okay 
yes directional influence include north south east and west the four directions or primary directions as we know then the vastu purusha mandala this is typically about vastu shastra that is we are considering a particular human being like thing based on this vastu shastra only considering that the vastu purusha is lying down in the floor which we are considering to construct the building we will be moving on our planning further and that is how we will be uh, preparing the layout of the building that is the building plan we will be preparing so this vastu purusha mandala is very 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 important about the vastu shastra about the vastu purusha mandala it is a mythical being it is uh, believed to reside in the plot of a land the design of the building should uh, respect the vastu purusha mandala grid basically uh, it is not possible to cover all these things in one uh, hour but since uh, i'll try my level best to introduce you what are the things so for that let us see what are all the important directions about the vastu purusha grid now we, let's go through uh, let's go into it through the particular aspects which we are covering okay now each cardinal direction it is associated with a specific qualities and elements okay that is we already know that east is the rising sun and knowledge and the south defines the fire and energy now about vastu the principles uh, recommend aligning rooms and functions with the auspicious directions based on their intended use only okay so about the directions uh, east and south when cut in by uh, that is we will be considering it as prime and uh, about the other direction relevance we will be mentioning now what are all the vastu doshas that we have to consider dosha in the sense that negative energy okay that is the architectural flaws or imbalance that can bring negative energy and disruptions so the common doshas include the placement of toilets or kitchen in unfavorable directions or the irregular shaped plots or the improper alignment that is what we would we have to actually take care about these can cause negative energy or disruptions in the well being of a human being in that particular building or in that plot so these are the things basic things which we have to take care about so moving on more or uh, moving deep into the topic we will now discuss about eight limbs of vastu so the fundamental aspects of vastu shastra that is vastu purusha mandala associated with the eight limbs of vastu eight limbs represents basic principles that govern the design and layout of a building then the eight limbs of vastu include rajapada agnipada ishana pada nairudi pada vayu pada jala pada nirudhi pada and vayu pada this are sanskrit words i am actually i know every one of you won't be aware about this language so the meaning is included in the itself someone trying to do uh, 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 sorry someone trying to say something or accidentally got uh, unmuted no sorry Dr. Shweta Kumar uh, trying to interact. No, sorry, ma'am. Ah, okay, fine. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So the Rajapada include king's seat, and that is uh, about the prime most position that we have to consider during the Vastu development. And Vayu Pada is about the air seat. Agni Pada about the fire seat. Jala Pada is about the water seat, and Ishana Pada about goat's seat. Nirudhi Pada about the sleeping seat, and then the Nairudhi Pada is about the demon's seat, and finally Vayu Pada, which is about the storage seat. So the Raja Pada or king's seat, which is the central. of the building that is considered so the king seat or the most important space of a building it should be kept open and free from all obstructions so the area often serves as the courtyard or central gathering space in traditional indian homes we may have seen at least in some films or pictures maybe there we have a courtyard or a open space or a central gathering space in our ancient homes that that is actually based on this rajapada considering this rajapada among the eight limbs of vastu shastra it has been given but that space really 
have uh, given a lot more intimacy those who have felt or those who have at least spend a day in such a uh, building can uh, realize the feel that that will be giving more affection to the members who are residing in that building right so there may be some uh, emotional connections for those members even after they are leaving that particular building with this particular courtyard so this is considered as the king seat which is the prime most important part of a building okay now the second one is about Akni Pada. The meaning itself says as if this is about the fire seat. So fire, where it is used exactly for the cooking purpose in kitchen area, right? So this is considered during the southeast corner of a building, which is associated with the fire, fire element. And it is considered as auspicious location for kitchen. So kitchen is preferred in the southeast corner of a building. Now, kitchen should be located here to the harness of energy and for uh, fire for cooking. So, the prime important or prime most uh, better position for kitchen is southeast corner of a building. Next is about Ishana Pada, that is goat seat. The northeast corner of a building is actually considered as the goat seat or preferred for a goat seat, which is considered as the sac sacred place basically so it is considered the most favorable direction for placing a uh, what to say that place of worship or meditation or uh, for a altar or any kind of prayers we will be preferring this particular corner and this area should be kept clean and peaceful most importantly so in a buildings northeast Corner, it is believed as if it if, if it is uh, left clean and peaceful then it, it can be preferred for the meditation purpose and uh, we will feel the feel the difference if it wants and then about the Nairudi Pada, which is the Demons Sea. The southwest corner of a building is considered as the Demons Sea, basically. It's generally considered inauspicious for important room or activities. So this area is often used for storage or less frequently used spaces like some storage room or something like that. Never prefer a bedroom or a study room or any important area if uh, possible. Okay. Now about Nirudhi Pada, that is about the sleeping seat, that is the southwest corner of a plot is considered, or a southwest corner of a building is considered as uh, the most appropriate place, place for rest and sleep. So it is considered suitable for bedrooms to ensure a peaceful and restful sleep. This area should be kept clutter free and conductive to relaxation. Next is about Vayu Pada, which is the storing the northwest corner is associated with the storage and preserving uh, resources. Okay, so uh, the northwest corner of a building is considered appropriate for storage rooms, pantries, or places where grains and supplies are kept. And about the proper organization and the cleanliness are important to this area. So, Vayupada should be organized and clean, maintained well. So we are summarizing all these corners typically in this picture. Those who want to note it down can take it from here. The northwest portion of a building can be especially chosen for granary and cow shed or a washing place or a septic tank. Then a guest room can be given there and a toilet and a dining or study room uh, or elder or for children or the parking. Okay. If you really want to note it down, uh, just to see as if, uh, okay, I am residing in this house, whether the directions are all covered like this, as such I am uh, residing or not. Actually, uh, I know it is difficult to take all these considerations into aspect like when uh, we are uh, living in a flat or villa because uh, in areas this urban areas now we are at we hardly only we will get a 3 bhk or 4 bhk even some families are struggling with some 1 bhk so when this one bedroom a hall kitchen where should i know the directions how can i arrange all these things it's quite difficult i can understand but still even with the available spaces if you can consider the directions 
house it will be better and it will give you some more uh, eternity some more peace in your house and uh, that residential ambience too that can be definitely controlled if you can see the direction in uh, total what to say in a proper perspective that is all that is all it is all about a belief only uh, still you can uh, manage that's it okay now uh, see the north direction the north direction of a building there we can arrange a treasury portion that, that can be considered as a tre treasury portion more open spaces we can consider there a living room or bathroom or entrance or a, the, anything but avoid bedrooms in the north direction of a building okay now about the uh, east direction bathroom can be given more open spaces guest room or living room or study rooms can be given towards the south direction it is better to uh, give it for the bedroom that is sleep with the head towards the south can give you a more peaceful and rest sleep okay <laughs> sorry so that is about the provision room and then store and avoid cellar or well in the south direction. And to, uh, finally, in the west direction, uh, dining room can be preferred more. Uh, overhead water tank, if you need, you can uh, prefer there. And the children's bedroom can be given. Study room, it is better to prefer in this west direction. And then a toilet or septic tank. And finally, avoid cellar in this particular area. Okay. Uh, about the northeast direction, we will be preferring there uh, the entrance basically uh, that can be considered for temple or meditation room as we have already discussed and then balcony or where the underground water tank anything can be considered but only avoid toilet and kitchen or septic tank in this northeast direction okay about the southwest direction it is the best place to place the master bedroom and wardrobes, uh, dressing room, heavy items, anything can be given. The only thing is to avoid cellar or a well in the southwest direction. Even you can save the cash box there as considering it as a treasury. And the kitchen, it is the most uh, best place to give the southeast direction. You can give the kitchen that is facing east and cook. It's the best uh, uh, position also. And the electric meters can be uh, preferred in this direction. Storerooms for oil, ghee, and tulasi plant and avoid a cellar water. In films, even you have you may have noted like uh, placing uh, or planting a tulasi tree inside the house. That is more auspicious to place a tulasi plant in the southeast direction of your house uh, it is not about the tradition or belief but it gives a positive energy overall the positive energy spreading smiles inside home is very good no so i'm not recommending it in a religious way but still it is very better to keep it a policy plan or a positive plan there inside your home in the southeast direction next is about town planning the importance of town planning include it is known as the urban planning it is the process of designing and organizing physical social and economical aspects of a city and urban areas so it involves creating a framework for suitable and functional urban development it ensures that the cities are efficient actually aesthetically pleasing and also it provides a high quality of life for their residents this is about town planning so how this town planning can be made into a uh, possible and in a very positive way this is based on the aspects and principles of town planning now we are about to discuss the aspects of uh, aspects and principles of town planning first one is using land and planning it properly the town planning begins with the allocation and the zoning of land for various purposes okay including residential commercial and industrial recreation and the green spaces so it aims to create well balanced and mixed use of urban environments that reduce commuting times and enhance accessibility so about the infrastructure development, the provision of essential uh, infrastructure such as roads and public transportation, utilities, etc. and communication networks is a crucial part of town planning as we know. So the well-planned infrastructure ensures the efficient movement of people and goods as well as the access to basic services. So this is about the infrastructure development. Now the third aspect is about the transportation planning. As we all know, even we are... Um, having a three to four vehicles for a two members house nowadays 
right so the residential buildings are even uh, giving or unattended if it is not having a parking facilities that is a situation nowadays because we are having at least a two vehicles for one person in our house right so 18 after 18 years there is no one in this world i think uh, i mean uh, just a joke okay uh, they are uh, they are are left without knowing uh, driving right so the driving license is nowadays a mandatory part of uh, our well being and uh, driving is essential part to survive also so all this we are practicing for a better transportation right because we are not having that uh, what to say uh, we are not having the patience to wait for we are all busy we are all living in a busy world and we are even busy there so we are we are trying to reach sorry the last minute hurry buries are taking or consuming a lot more of our energy basically so efficient transport systems are essential for the urban areas town planners consider the design and layout of roads highways public transit and then the pedestrian and cycling infrastructure also so the reduced traffic congestions are one among our dream nowadays and improving the connective common goals that so about the housing and residential planning providing adequate affordable and safe housing is a priority in town planning so the planners focus on creating diverse housing options basically including affordable housing high density development and mixed income neighborhoods next is about the public participation so we must consider the voice of public while planning a town okay because we are the the uh, what to say if i am residing in a particular area and you are coming to plan my town you should hear what i have what i would like to say right so i may be having different aspects and i may be having a proper picture about this place not you okay so the town planner may be due to that place if he is just what to say he is just uh, doing your planning as if uh, whatever he likes or he is doing everything theoretically practically there might be some errors or technical mistakes can happen and in future also it may cause difficulty to the public who are going to live there so the public participation or the voice of public should be considered during the town planning that is what it is saying so the public participation helps to ensure that planning efforts align with the needs and the desires of the local population next is about the long term vision uh, even you, about the roads and developments we are seeing that uh, the, there are uh, six lane paths eight lane paths so when the road is firstly coming as if you will be thinking why these six lanes why these eight lanes are there this much vehicles going to pass this area this is only during the construction period uh, just after a three to four years you may can see this uh, there will be a drastic increase in the vehicles right and if it is after a 10 years so it is possible is it possible to again and again reconstruct the road and everything no so we should have a long term vision by planning a town that is what we are even doing in our house itself right so whatever we are uh, purchasing no the even the furnitures we are taking care that the dining table there may be only four people in the home now but if uh, what about if a uh, guest is coming our family is growing right it is not coming down so uh, we will be considering a six chair dining table in that sense so if the space and the economy is available we will be preferring for the six chair dining chair that is the long time vision so the uh, if time permits and if we have the fund we should consider the future also so it, it is planned for the growth and adopt of changing demographic uh, the, the economic and environmental conditions uh, actually says about this now the aspects uh, about the legal and the regulatory frameworks include that the town planning is supported by laws regulations and so ordinances that guide development so the planning authorities and government agencies play a crucial role in enforcing the upgrading these all regulations next is about the continuous monitoring and evaluation so the town planning is an ongoing process that require monitoring and evaluation of implemented plans adjustments and revisions are made as needed to address the emerging challenges and the opportunities next is about the temples so hope these portions are clear we have started with the uh, vastu how it can be implemented in a particular residential or a particular one building and then we have discussed about the town planning now we are moving on to the temples in india for uh, discussing the overall uh, constructional techniques that is the about in the stone architecture for eternity and things that we are we will be discussing spanning 
mathematics uh, that is temple uh, built in india are mostly of stone structures isn't it that is they have proposed many unique features uh, now what are the requirements as we are considering is like it is uh, it should it will be considering the temples in india will be considering during their construction about the spanning mathematics astronomy building science supply chain management rope cutting technology of sound engineering these are all the basic things that uh, we are considering or uh, the temple india construction or architects are considering now the examples is bradishara uh, temple in tanjore sun temple in konark and kailasa temple in ellora i can show you few pictures and explaining what are going on in this particular construction techniques about the Bradeshwara temple, this is a temple built thousand years back using granite and a vimana or a tower of 99 feet structure about this uh, sanction is one of the tallest in South India. Uh, the plan is about 16 to 16 squares and uh, design known as Patma Garpa Mandala in the Dravida architecture of southern India is what it is considered about. Shikara a dome weighing 80 tons at the at top of the uh, tower. Musical pillars in Mandaba requires carving the stones uh, so that the sound frequency is properly established. This is a picture, typical picture of Brihadishwara temple in Tanjaur. If you anyone of have visited there, you can uh, now pictureize the things also. So when the IoT is going to conduct an offline session, we will also plan about a trip, at least a one-day trip we will, we will plan about, and the area nearby will be choosing and let us go there, okay? So this is about Brahadishara Temple. The second one is Sun Temple. Sun Temple you may have heard about. It is a temple built 1250 uh, uh, CE using the stone in the form of gigantic chariot and uh, 24 elaborately carved stone wheels symbolizing 24 pakas is, uh, in a year. That is a year about 12 feet diameter itself. Seven horses are in the front symbolically pulling the chariot and the wheels of the temple are Sunday used to calculate time accuracy to a minute. This is the typical picture of Sun Temple, which is at Konak. About the placement of main temple and sun god aligned, first ray of sun from the coast would cross the Nata Mandir, that is dancing hall, and Natya Mandir, we say, and would fall and reflect from the diamond placed in the crown of the sun god. That is a concept or basic thing that we are considering during this uh, sun temple architecture. Uh, this is one typical picture. As already we have mentioned, uh, the seven horses are there in the front and symbolically pulling that particular chariot. And the uh, diameter itself about comes about at 12 feet. This is how the uh, architecture is considered. Next one is Kailasa Temple. Kailasa Temple means the largest rock cut structure built by uh, Karna. That is one uh, Rakshagurka king. Then, then uh, he, what he have done is like digging out a sloping basalt hill with the two massive trenches with a 90 meter long and joined with a, a connecting trench of 53 meter in length. And uh, there, is, there is a vertical excavation. This is a picture of Kailasa Temple. You can see this. Is the picture clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So the vertical excavation or cover started on the top of the original rock and excavated downwards, basically. And about the three-story Vimana, that is a tower with the octagonal dome and the huge freestanding columns, that is Baja Dwaja Stambas. That is what we say about it. The standing columns flanking the Mandaba entrance hall, which has 16 columns set in the gro groups of the four. This is the typical picture of Kailasa Temple in Ellora. About the temple architecture of India, now we have gone through the three typical examples and how they are constructed that we have gone through. And this is about the stone architecture for eternity. Now moving deep into the topic, what is the basics or what are all the basic things considered during a temple architecture that we are going to discuss? This is almost the end of the session. Uh, so the components of a temple actually we are considering include the Garbhagraha, a Mandaba, a Prakara, Adisthana, Stambha, 
then a prastara, shikara, and a stubi. In the picture itself, it is very clearly defined as the, the artha mandaba, which is the receiving courtyard. Then comes the mandaba, maybe the natyagraha or something like that, the mandaba, the receiving area. Right. Then the shikara is there. Then that shikara, above the shikara, there is a amalaka. And then kalasha, the most auspicious and positive energy is concerned here in this kalasha. Every temple is famous for how these pujas are done in this kalasha and what are all the idols related to things will be considered based on the kalasha puja and the, what are all the kalasha things. That is all about religious only. I am not going deep into it. About the architecture, if we go through it, then the under this particular stuba or tower only it comes the garpa graha which is the most important part of that particular construction so about the garbha graha it is believed as a womb or epicenter of the temple where the presiding deity is to be placed the positioning is established using vastu purusha mandala then comes the mandaba it is a pavilion structure in the face of in the front of garbha graha and the mukha mandaba artha mandaba maha mandaba such a three types of mandaba may be there in some construction Either it can be consigned to or confined or totally summed, uh, summed up into one particular mandaba only. It is based on the availability of steps or space. There can be three different types of it. Pillared structures of varying numbers and sizes are there. Then comes the prakara, which is the open, open space of circumvention that is pradakshina around the garbhagraha. That, that, place, that place is named as prakara. One of the most or more such structures designed depending on the overall size and span of the temple superstructure only. Then comes the adistana, which is the, the name itself says as that is the base platform, that is the entire superstructure rests on it. It have a raised platform circle, that is the rest of the structure established then about the stamba the set of pillars that support various structures then provide the pillars of developing the elevation of the temple and then the prastara that is it is the uh, end tablet in the temple structure only shigara the town like infrastructure built above the garbhagraha this forms the main elevation to the temple then stubi it is the final to the structure this one typical pictures says it all <clears throat> we have mentioned about uh, Shikara, Garpagraha, then the production of circumvention, then the Jagadi that is about the platform, then Arthashastra, Adistana. Mandaba, here you can see the three types of Mandaba that is Artha Mandaba, the front most portion, then comes the Mandaba or the main hall, then the Maha Mandaba that is the great hall. Then the Andarala, that, that is considered as a vestibule. Purushinga, that is subsidiary Shikhara. Then the Kalasha. Architecture of Kajrao Temple, basically. This is the basic thing. This is what considered in every type of temple architecture. This is the basics only. So always this will be facing in the east direction only. This is one particular representation as a plan. So after seeing this, let us move on and uh, go through the words once again. That is Garpagraha, Mandaba, Pragara, Adistana, Stamba, Prastara, Shikara and Subi. So whomsoever is listening to the session, now you can picturize if you have ever visited a temple in your life, that is whether you have seen or noted these portions. Or if not, you can visit... Uh, that is, you can uh, at least uh, note down this and even you can go through this when visiting a uh, temple for next time. It's a great, uh, what to say, the experience, no? These are all done very long years back. You have to think about it also. This is how the relevance of Indian uh, knowledge system is laying about. So our ancestors, even before every many, many, many long years, they have even think about it and uh, how brilliant this uh, construction or architecture or everything has been planned. That is what we have to note down here. That is the thing actually we have to study from them. And these are all not taken from any Roman or Egyptian architecture or something like that. These are all actually considered based on the 
uh, what they have considered only but what is our ancestors have done only and we are considering it nowadays in the v and even we are now following all these in this modern temple architecture also <coughs> This one plan can simply explain what is the importance of a gobra or entrance and then only a person can enter into the total structure and then comes the uh, vimana or that is the portion of landing and smaller shrines will be there, a thousand pillar chapter. That This is about the uh, Tiruvalluvar temple. If anyone have visited, you can uh, you know, pictureize this, I believe. So the last uh, topic of the day that is about iconography. Now, if you have, uh, if you, if you have ever thought about, iconography is the study of interpretation. Okay, visual symbols and icons often with the context of art, art and culture. Uh, why, why iconography here means? Whenever uh, you are trying to visit uh, uh, ancient structure from hereafter, you can just go through the symbols which may be noted or carved there in the rocks or stone sculptures, if any. There may be some kind of uh, languages that will be simply uh, having a lot more stories inside. They may be con uh, conveying or they will be trying to convey a lot more uh, hidden stories inside them. So this iconography is a typical thing that is an interpretation used by our ancestors in order to convey all those techniques which they have used to the uh, future generation like us uh, when they are going to study through it and it involves analyzing the understanding and meaning of significance of images symbols and representations especially within the religious cultural or historical uh, sorry historical context about iconography can encompass various forms of visual communication also it includes the paintings sculptures architecture and even modern media like advertisement and logos also so the art of idol making requires good understanding of relative proportions of different parts of the image. So the Vastu texts provide intricate development of these proportions for both male and female images. You can even justify all these things with any of the religious uh, basic, uh, what to say, that uh, uh, old uh, concepts. Uh, due to the limitation time, I have only considered about uh, considering the architecture about temples only, because uh, even uh, visiting uh, whichever monuments uh, can be an old church or an old mosque, uh, if, you, if it is accessible or uh, you can go through it, you can definitely go through it. Uh, but uh, I do believe that a bit more complicated structure is always a, a Hindu temple. Uh, that is how the old Overall, things is uh, telling about. So that is why, since it is complicated and it is having more, um, what to say, parts to explain about, that is why I choose it. That <laughs> all these things can be taken, uh, can be taken in consideration whenever you are visiting any ancient type of building. Okay. So these are few iconographic symbols. Just, just a few only, just to know about. Uh, if uh, such a symbol, uh, if you have, uh, if you are seeing it somewhere it uh, mentioned about a worship place and then their network performance this is actually new gen only and a cafe then a mosque center then a coastal then a, the, actually you can see these things too that is why i have included this is about the mesh network about online payment you can see this this is what iconography is about that is what i would like to convey with you Some of the key aspects of uh, iconography include the religious iconography, cultural iconography are there, mythological iconography, political and social iconography, and evolving iconography are there. It is a basically a, a subject itself. If you are talking about this, you can even write many papers or literatures regarding this iconography and the symbol and the last if, if you are to study the language, uh, you can go through very deep into this topic. 
yes uh, so concluding about the summary we have today discussed about the town planning collective set of uh, process ideas and methods using the science and technology to develop the available land of human habitation and other uses in most effective way architecture address the process of planning designing and construction building of human use and the vastu shastra is essentially art of correct setting where by one can align the uh, structure to a uh, what to say panjabhoot does that is the rotational influence of sun moon and other planets surrounding the earth this is how we can uh, uh, connect it to scientifically then the planning and architectural aspects related in the vastu can be viewed using uh, a part classification of the concept these could be referred as the limbs of vastu and then vastu shastra discuss uh, final aspects of a variety of individual buildings that make up a town or a village broadly three categories of building can be identified that is residential building temple and other public infrastructure temple is important element of vastu shastra as the building of temple is considered most important by the kings and wealthy individuals so the structure has a square form of grid and ground plans that is tall towers and then the uh, rich sculptures or the elaborate sculptures decorating the wall and towers so the vastu test include the component of a temple and a type of temple designs various structural elements in the temple iconography uh, for the idols and laying out of the temple uh, complex using the vastu purusha mandala that is what we would like to know about so this is overall summary of the day and then hope i really hope that uh, you just got a mere idea about this topic i was given to explain the basic civil engineering aspects regarding the indian knowledge system this is how i have covered it uh now we can move on to the question answer session ma'am are you there